Today is raining. Today we are again back with the book Living Spring, which we're going to do a wonderful next chapter by Emmanuel through Chica Xavier. And today is a beautiful chapter at chapter um, 48. And it is in the Lord's prison. So this is the capture. So just before we begin, visualize ourselves in the presence of Jesus. So, so that we can relax and together put our minds on Jesus. So that we can visualize this message that Emmanuel will be bringing to us and listen what he's trying to tell us. Why is my language language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. And this is Jesus in John 8, verse 43. Christ's language has always seemed incomprehensible and strange to many learners of the gospel. Doing as much good as possible, even when evil, or evils are numerous and on the increase. Lending without expecting repayment, forgiving always, loving one's enemy, helping slanderers and other bad people. Many people listen to the good news, but they cannot grasp its, its teaching. This happens to so many followers of the gospel because they use their mental energy in other areas. They vaguely believe in heaven's help in time of suffering, but show a complete lack of interest in studying and applying the divine law. Forgive me, let me just get to the next page. <clears throat> the worry connected with, honest, with ownership envelops their um, existence. They want the gold of the earth, the bread of the storehouse, usable linen, good health, the pleasures of the senses, and social respect so much that they do not remember that they are mere beneficiaries of the world. They never think about the temporariness of material assets, whose sole function is to provide them with the appropriate environment for working in charity and in the light for the um, elevation of the eternal spirit. They hear Christ's call, but their attention is riveted to the appeals of the physical life. They hear, but they do not listen. They are informed, but do not understand. In this area, arena of contradiction, we always have respectable persons and sometimes wonderful friends. They hold immense potential of goodness in the heart, but their minds are always occupied with perishable forms. There are invaluable workstations, but the equipment is used for more or less pointless activities. Therefore, let us not forget that it is always easy to hear the language of the Lord, but it is essential to present to him a heart free of residues of the earth in order to receive the divine word and in truth. This week and today, beloved friends, we are being called to look at ourselves again and to see, do we listen and do we understand the teaching, the spiritual teachings of Jesus?
And we have to breathe through it through, through this. Because it is good to look at ourselves and know where are we. Because this is how we can change, how we can actually focus, put our intention on the good. Christ's language said Manuel has always seemed incomprehensible and strange to many learners of the gospel. Even you and I, beloved, we talk the spiritual way, or we should. Because if we are learners and if we are studying the gospel, we have a way of speaking, a way of being that are different from most people. So you have this inbuilt being thing, an inbuilt way of speaking. And of course, we will be different than the rest. Doing as much good as possible, even when evil, evils are numerous on the increase. And I think you and I are seeing this on earth today. Lending, and he's explaining, lending without accepting repayment. Forgiving always. Do we forgive always? Loving one's enemy. Helping slanderers and bad people. Do we want to help? Or do we want to walk the other way? Because it's too much work to do. Many people listen to the good news, but I cannot grasp its teaching. This teaching is what Emmanuel has just explained to us. It is a way of being constantly in a way of thinking. It is forgiving always. It is lending without expecting repayment. It is about unconditional love. The example of true love that Jesus taught and also lived by. This happens to many followers of the gospel because they use their mental energies in other areas. Where are our subconscious thoughts? If we write down our thought patterns, what are we thinking about most? If we do this, we get to know ourselves and we get to know what, where we can change and where we can put our focus on. The vague, they vaguely believe in heaven's help in time of suffering. So there's a lot of people that believe that when you ask if something, if you need something you ask, then it will be given. But are we always asking? Are we needy or are we a part of those that serve on earth? But show a complete lack of interest in the study and applying the divine laws. So Emmanuel is telling us it's not only about the study. We need to study. It's important to educate ourselves. Because it is through education that we change so that we can put our focus on where the laws, the divine laws want us to, is telling us what to do. But are we applying it? Are we applying it in our daily life? In all circumstances, wherever we go, every thought that we have. Because it's like being in a um, repetition, it is like doing everything in this divine, loving way. Studying is easy. We have got a radio, 
which there's a lot of studies, so we can put on contact radio, which is amazing, and we can educate ourselves. But we need to, to do it on our own as well. We need to pick up a book, read the book, and actually study. And I think um, Angie Stewart has a beautiful example from to, to write a book from a book, to, to give this note so that you can come back and remind yourself. So to take notes, just like studying when you're in school, studying, that is the word studying, writing down, using your senses so that you can remember certain things. That is studying. And then going out and giving it to someone. Because then you will truly remember what you have studied. And then applying it. Not only talking the talk, but walking the talk. Do we walk the talk? The worries connected with ownership envelop their existences. This is again attachment. And we are constantly being reminded to see if we are attached. If we remember last week's um, chapter, was about attachment and how we should free ourselves from being attached to things. And it was greatly explained by Vanessa in one of the lessons in um, what we are doing now, um, 11 o'clock, that we should, that we can actually be attached to our bodies. So, can you visualize yourself being not attached to your body? Can you visualize yourself as a spirit? not having a body and we know that we are reminded to constantly work or remind ourselves about death, about returning to the spiritual world and make it a practice to see to see yourself how you would see yourself when it's your time to go back how you would what you would do if you have to leave everything, your body, everything you own, everybody you love, how would you feel about that? And I know it's hard, especially now with so many people disconnected. But we have to see ourselves in a way, in that way, so that we can be a practice and knowing in ourselves a small knowing because we can't truly really know until we go through it again. But somewhere, somewhere in us, the, the knowing of that feeling of dying and to returning is still there. And to be at peace with the thought because it's only in the way that we think that withheld us from peace thinking about it. They want the gold of the earth, the bread of the storehouse, usable linen, good health, the pleasures of the senses, and social respect so much that they do not remember that they are more mere beneficiaries of the store. They never think about the temporariness of material assets. So again, we are being reminded that it's only temporary. And that we are the butlers, that the nothing belongs to us, that we are only here. It's only helping us through this incarnation. And that everything belongs to God and will go to someone else and will go to someone else. And the body will return to the earth. <clears throat> Whose sole function is to provide them with an appropriate environment for working in charity and in the light, and it says, the sole purpose of 
the assets that we have on us is so that we can be more charitable, it's so that we can be able to work and to help others more. That is why we have the assets that God provides us. But do you and I use it for charity? And in the light of the um, um, elevation of the eternal spirit, <clears throat> to help us in our evolutionary path. They hear Christ's call, but they, their attention is revited to the appeals of the physical life. Beloved, do you and I, can we hear Christ's call? Can we hear that we are called, each and every one of us, to do more, to work harder? Because that is what the good spirits are asking from us. They will never tell us to, to rest. They will never tell us it's enough, you've done enough. They will always tell us that, work harder and do more. And they hear, but they do not listen. They are informed, but they do not understand. Do you and I understand? If you listen to something, there's always something that is for you and something that is for me. Something that I need to focus on. So if we want messages, the Spirit's teachings are full of messages for you and me. And maybe your message will be different than my message. Because we get and we receive what we need. You, according to your plan, your evolutionary plan, and I, according to my evolutionary plan. In this arena of contradiction, we always have respectable persons and sometimes wonderful friends. They hold the immense potential of goodness in their hearts, but they, their minds are always occupied with perishable forms. This is something that we truly need to watch out for because it can be put in a way where you can say it's acceptable, but then it's not. For example, sometimes the spirits will come to you and tell you, oh, but you are tired. Not the mentors, but those spirits that don't want us to work more and harder. Oh, but you're tired. It's okay if you're tired. You don't feel well. You've got a headache. It's okay for you to rest. Those are the signs, especially to work harder. Because you do have a headache, or you are tired, or you have a lot of other work. But is it for the eternal good? And we should not be too busy. Kept ourselves too busy, have too many things to do, so that we don't have the time for the things of the soul and for the eternal as well. <clears throat> there are unvaluably workstations, but their equipment is used for more or less pointless activities. So, what they are telling us today, Emmanuel telling us today, is that you and I have gifts, we say gifts, or we can say talents, or we can say, it can be mediumship, it can be, you can maybe speak in front of people, maybe you're fluent in something, there's so many things that we can do, maybe you're a great writer, but what are you using it for? Are you using it for the good of all? to tell everybody about maybe spiritism, 
about the good news or are you using it for yourself, for your own gain? They are invaluable workers, sorry. Therefore, let us not forget that it is always easy to hear the language of the Lord. But it's essential to present to him a heart free of residue of the earth in order to receive the divine word in spirit and in truth. So we need to cleanse our heart. We have to be open. And sometimes when you struggle, we pray about it. And if we are in a struggle or something is up with us, let's pray about it. Let's, let's ask Jesus to help us understand his messages and not only to understand but to, to apply this lesson to every little soul, every soul, and I want to say every being so that we can see and we can learn and that we can give out this wonderful energy of love and acceptance and understanding. And the question that we can ask ourselves when we are out and about and doing things, what would God tell you to do? What will God ask of you? What, will, what are God asking of you to do? If you, it was like, um, if we are being asked to look after animals, each other, but how are we doing it? If you're in a workplace and you have a responsibility, how are you using it? You know that you have to go back and tell your boss or your leader or whoever you're working for, and give feedback from what you have been doing about your work and you will be paid accordingly. You will either get a promotion or if you are a lazy worker, you will stagnate in one position. But you also have to be responsible for your work. Aren't we the same? Aren't we the workers that have this work? Has the learner, disciple, because we are still learning, like Paul said. So not there yet, but we will get there. Are we happy disciple so that we can work? Because we know that we have to give feedback, give feedback for what we are doing. And it's a practice. It's the same as practicing a new skill. Because this is a skill. We are building the divine laws or skills that we are practicing. And the more we do it, the easier it comes. So today, beloved, let's feel the Lord's presence. And let's concentrate and listen if we help ourselves and pray about to understand these laws and these lessons of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next week. Bye-bye.